Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about a vast majority of cryptocurrencies, uh, mainly talking about XRP, XLM, and also a few other ones uh, that might surprise you guys. So with that in mind, let's dive in and uh, let's start off with this post I seen earlier today. So this is from Black Swan Capitalist, and we do see these technologies are positioned for success. Uh, XRP, XLM, and IOTA. Now, personally speaking, I haven't really looked into IDO, uh, IOTA. Um, I know that a lot of people have said like IOTA is actually pretty decent. I just have never looked into it. I know that they're doing a lot of things around like smart cities and stuff like that. But I do think that XRP and XLM obviously are major players. I, I have my eye set on a few other ones as well, which I've mentioned many times. But we just see through interoperable solutions creating an environment of collaborative disruption. It's all about synergy, not rivalry. It's also aligning with the roadmap released by the G20 for the adoption of ISO 2022 standards. And we do see breaking barriers. Ripple's XRP, Stellar's XLM, and IOTA paved the way with possible swift integration dominating the billion dollar crypto market. And um, yeah, I mean, like, as we look at things happening, one of the main players that I think should be added to these lists, because I know everyone loves Q and T, and I get that, but I also think everyone should be paying attention to Chainlink. Um, I've been adding to my link bag for a while. This goes all the way back to September of 2022, but this is something very interesting. We do see Chainlink is building a token infrastructure for Swift. A collaborative proof of concept will allow Swift messages to instruct token transfers. Key takeaways, Chainlink and Swift are working on a proof of concept that will help Swift messages instruct token transfers. And then we do see this innovation will allow financial institutions to easily integrate with blockchain technology via Swift. And then also the proof of concept will make use of Chainlink's cross-chain interoperability protocol, CCIP. Again, like all of this is very, very interesting. Um, and I do think that some of these players like Chainlink or like even Quant, right? Because they're, they're very complementary. See, that's the biggest problem with this space is like everyone wants to create this rivalry. But like if we look at Swift and we look at Quant, very, very complementary assets. Um, I think that this is great because what we are seeing is interoperability. We're seeing you know, unlocking interoperability through something like CCIP for something as large as Swift, like that's very, very large. And it's actually very complimentary for the entire industry as well, uh, because it can benefit a lot of these great, you know, assets like even XRP, XLM, you name it, right? But then also over here, we do see Swift admits Ripple is better. And this is from Good Morning Crypto. And uh, Swift admits Ripple is better, Ripple and Central Bank Digital Check this out. Ripple and central bank digital currencies are a part of the same conversation. And on January of 2023, this year alone, one of their CFO, their CEO, it could have been Garlinghouse, came out and said that 2023 will be the year of central bank digital currencies for Ripple. Now we have a Swift official also regurgitating those same claims. So just to close this out here, how do you feel about a Swift official acknowledging what Ripple and Stellar are doing? It's great work. Well, it's it's amazing. And, you know, as we know, Swift has too high of a percentage of errors and you just can't continue with software that was created in what the 1960s. And of course, that was Linda P. Jones. For those out there that don't know who uh, Linda P. Jones is, definitely think everyone should go and uh, do a little bit of research on her. She's uh, she's great in the space, but. Yeah, I mean, is Swift admitting Ripple is better? I think that more so Swift is uh, realizing that, you know, this space is becoming a reality and, you know, Ripple has been expanding for so long. You know, I, I just made a video actually talking a little bit about, um, you know, Swift and talking about Volante and the exposure to Swift. We know that Swift needs rapid settlement. So technically speaking, I look at Ripple as being very complimentary for Swift as well. I think that, you know, Swift utilizing RippleNet, aka utilizing XRP as well, um, would be very beneficial for them. Um, but for an example, like this is uh, what Volante said. They basically said that sitting at the heart of that change will be ISO 2022, the standard that will bring together disparate systems, standards, and methods from across the globe and tie them together. No greater example of this can be found than in that of Ripple. And then they called Ripple a Swift competitor that announced in May of 2020 that it would join the ISO 2022 standards body as its first member based on distributed ledger technology. 
And uh, yeah, I mean, like as we do really kind of look at Swift, we look at Ripple and things like that. I look at these technologies as very complementary if, if they are going to utilize, you know, the technology. Like if Swift does not utilize blockchain technology, if they, I will say this, like so far what I've seen, Ripple has the best uh, payment technology. It's just that simple. Um, it's the number one reason why Ripple with XRP is mentioned on so many banking uh, documents. Um, it's mentioned within PDF files. It's mentioned on a, a ton of trials around um, central bank digital currencies and even banking transfers and things like that. So, you know, if Swift wasn't going to utilize Ripple and if Swift isn't going to utilize XRP alongside RippleNet, I just don't see how they are going to be around for the next five or 10 years. And uh, I remember there was, a, I want to say it was Visa or MasterCard. It was someone um at a convention talking about that and they were like you know is swift going to even be around in the next five years we don't know and for a fact like they do even say up here like a lot can happen in five years after all we we don't know what's going to happen around the space but payments are changing there's major changes happening and we do see over here groundbreaking swift innovation paves way for global use of cbdc's and tokenized assets this got posted let me scroll down uh just so i can get you guys a date oh never mind i can't see the date oh never mind october 5th 2022 um and we do see breakthrough solves major challenge in digital ecosystem development and this is centered out on tokenization assets as well shows how digital currencies and assets could be used at scale across borders by leveraging existing financial infrastructure 14 central and commercial banks already testing new cbdc solution swift has successfully shown that central bank digital currencies and tokenized assets can move uh, seamlessly on existing financial infrastructure a major milestone towards enabling their smooth integration into the international financial uh, ecosystem the findings from two separate experiments solve the, the significant challenge of interoperability and cross-border transactions by bridging between dis distributed ledger technology networks and existing payment networks or systems, allowing digital currencies and assets to flow smoothly alongside and interact with their traditional counterparts. This important step forward builds on Swift's core capabilities and means that as CBDCs and tokens develop, they can be rapidly deployed at scale to facilitate trade and investment between two or sorry, between more than 200 uh, countries and territories around the world. And uh, again, like this was a big one. Interlinking CBDCs for seamless cross-border payments. Globally, 9 out of 10 central banks are actively exploring digital, uh, digital currencies, often using different uh, technologies and with a primary focus on domestic use. For the potential of CBDCs to be fully realized across borders, these digital currencies need to overcome inherent differences to interact with each other as well as with traditional fiat currencies. Swift, in collaboration with Cap Gemini, achieved CBDC to CBDC transactions between different DOT networks based on popular Quorum and Corda. Mm, interesting. Technologies as well as fiat to CBDC flows between these networks and a real time growth settlement system. The success showed that blockchain networks could be interlinked for cross border payments through a single gateway and that Swift's new transaction management capabilities could orchestrate all inter network communication. 14 central banks, and they do mention all of the uh, central banks here are now collaborating in a testing environment to accelerate the path to full-scale deployment. Very interesting. But this is exactly what I've been saying like around a lot of these uh, major innovations with Swift and a lot of these major names. Like As we look at tokenization, I mean, the World Economic Forum is projecting that tokenization could have an estimated value of $24 trillion by 2027. I'm not too sure if we are going to hit that just yet unless something very major happens. Um, but I do think that we are seeing the shaping of this infrastructure um, happening before our eyes. And I think that's very exciting to see names like Swift on board. Obviously, yes, this isn't like new news, but you know, as we continue to see progression here, it is getting very exciting because even March of uh, this year, we've seen Swift to progress blockchain corporate actions pilot to the next stage. And we do see yesterday, Swift shared the results of its latest corporate actions blockchain pilot, which it declared a success with plans to progress the work. The latest experiments involved six organizations, including American Century Investments, City, and Northern Trust. In the previous trial, Vanguard was also a participant. With corporate actions, whether it's dividends, general meetings, or stock split, the problem is with intermediaries. 
They receive data from multiple sources, which invariably does not match. As a result, asset managers, custodians, and brokers must do a lot of manual work to establish the correct data. The goal of this pilot is to create a golden copy of the data, which is shared amongst the participants. Again, all of this centered out on blockchain. Um, as we see what's happening here, it's very clear that blockchain technology and crypto technology is going to be the future. Um, and usually when I say blockchain and crypto technology, I mean like when I say crypto, it's more so centered out on DLT. Blockchain technology is a little bit different than DLT, as you guys are probably all aware. Um, but as we look at tokenization as a whole, like I'm very excited about things happening here because, you know, Swift getting in on the CBDC game. We know that Citibank is predicting that $5 trillion worth of uh, CBDCs will be in circulating um, in the economy by the end of this decade. So by 2025, right? Or uh, 2035, sorry. Um, we'll probably have a lot of money flooding around this system. Um, and it's only going to continue to thrive from here on out. Like That's why I do like when we are starting to see um, a lot of these players like Swift saying like, oh, hey, we're going to have this much value or even um, the World Economic Forum projecting $24 trillion by 2027. Like we don't know how fast, you know, things are really going to move when we have like the FedNow service launching. We have like Bank of America saying CBDCs are the future of money and payments. Like I do uh, believe that we are most likely going to see a lot of tokenization happening at scale very, very soon. Real estate itself, by the way, like global real estate is a $300 trillion asset class. So who knows? Who really knows where we are going to be uh, headed towards? But I know that a lot of people have been projecting like $16 trillion by 2030. Like these numbers are all over the place. But, you know, if I had to be, if I had to make a prediction, I would say like $10 trillion by 2030. That gives us uh, roughly about like six and a half years. And, you know, in six and a half years, I could definitely see a lot of things happening around the space to the point where, you know, we are starting to see a lot more real estate on the chain. Um, we are starting to see a lot more capital markets being, you know, uh, dominated by tokenization, equities and things like that. So, you know, that's my thought process. But also um, what's interesting around a lot of these uh, major innovations, like when we go back to the Swift announcement with a, a few of these players that uh, were uh, being utilized within this this overall um, trial, meaning Vanguard and, you know, major names like that. It's interesting to look at some of the names tied to uh, these innovations, like for an example, like Symbiont or, you know, any of the other ones, um, because if we actually go back down, so uh, I'm sorry, like if we go to Symbiont, so they actually filed uh, chapter 11 bankruptcy, but if we go to their website, for an example, oh, sorry, uh, their website, we can see what we do. Symbiont is building the next generation of financial markets infrastructure. Now, remind, a reminder, like this company ch filed Chapter 11. We see City here. We see State Street. We see Franklin Templeton Investments. We see NASDAQ. We see Vanguard as well. Why am I looking at uh, Franklin Templeton? Well, it's very simple. They just announced a partnership actually with Stellar. But you see Franklin uh, Templeton announces the Franklin on-chain U.S. government money fund surpasses $270 million in assets under management. And uh, they chose Stellar actually to um, start building out a few things. It's actually very exciting to see this. By the way, this is a very large uh, company. We actually broke them down in the past. For an example, they have about roughly $1.4 trillion in assets under management. This one is very large, um, like I said. Now, mind you, let's go back to Symbiont and let's look at this real quick. So City and NASDAQ, we, we just recently broke them down with Ripple actually with Medico. Very large players as well. But also, if we go back to uh, that uh, article, Simeon raised an invoice to Swift after the bankruptcy commenced. Swift acknowledged the situation in its report, saying that the corporate action solution is intended to be agnostic to the underlying blockchain. We are currently in the process of identifying the most qualified technology partner to play this role moving forward. So we don't know who they're going to choose, but it's definitely interesting uh, that Symbiont is essentially out of the picture. Um, but all of this in my, in my mind is leading towards Clearing 2.0. Remember what I talked about uh, with like Clearing 2.0? We are essentially going to be seeing real-time payments uh, or at least real-time payment technology becoming a huge focus. And I'm, I'm talking about like real-time settlement too. 
Um, a lot of this is centered out on the big banks like City, for an example, which is why like we made a lot of those connections. Also, the Bank of London, the Bank of London is one that we've been watching. Uh, there's a lot going on within the UK, so keep a close eye on the UK. But the FedNow service, I think, is going to be something that really kind of accelerates this push. Um, clearing 2.0 definitely is something that everyone should be watching for because to me, this is going to be centered out on CBDCs and DLT and blockchain technology. And we even do see the clearing 2.0 bank also must be flexible enough to embrace the emergence of new point to point global networks such as Ripple and XRP and to settle in whatever currency stakeholders demand. And remember, like XRP allows for that, like XRP could do that. And we even do see as a clearing bank, you'll need the ability to work with whatever rails come in and as fast as they can move money. Yeah, I mean, like we are, we are seeing this, like everything is aligning around this new innovation. And I think that, you know, as more and more time goes on, we're, we're going to start to see more things like the FedNow service pop up, probably within Europe and the big four. Um, it's definitely going to be something to watch as a trend for the next couple months and even possibly years. But to me personally, I think that we are kind of in the new realm of uh, payments. And I think that, you know, a lot of these things are starting. And I think that the leaders like Swift realize this. Um, and I, I also think that Swift needs to innovate beyond the means of what they have been doing. Um, I know that they want CBDCs. They want to uh, center it on CBDCs. But I just don't think that's going to be enough. I think that, you know, settlement technology is going to be crucial for Swift to innovate for, uh, further on. And uh, we already know that, you know, Ripple is there for the complementary uh, technology uh, in infrastructure because, you know, even David Schwartz said, you know, they're not trying to replace Swift. In fact, like they're glad that Swift is making, you know, payments faster, but they still demand instant settlement. And that's the one thing that Swift is actually missing. And that's the one thing that Ripple can really offer to them to complement their overall system. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below though. Um, in my opinion, I think that XRP, XLM, XDC, very pivotal um, assets, but Chainlink, Chainlink is a dark horse. Do not overlook Chainlink. So with that being said, uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because of more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. Uh, this is up to you all. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night. Wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.